Okay. <clears throat> so we have the highest number to be 6, the least number to be 2. So what scale do you think we can still go for? I think we can go for a scale of 1. Okay, interval 1. So here, we start from 0. In fact, don't forget, all the time, your graph should start from 0. I mean, when it is a bar graph, unless in some strange situations, and when we get to some of these situations, I'm going to alert you. But for now, as a primary student who is preparing for checkpoints, whenever you are plotting your graph, you should always start it from what? Zero. And then when you start from zero, you choose your skill and you go along with the skill. In other words, you go along with a suitable interval. So for instance, in this case, if I'm choosing a skill of one, what this means is that the first one, I started with zero, the next one is going to be one. I'll keep adding one. So when you add one to one, you're going to get two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You see, I chose a scale or an interval of one, and I kept with that. Please never do this. Don't start with zero, one, then you go to, let's say, two, then you jump to five, six, seven, 12, it is entirely wrong. You choose a skill or an interval and you go with that same interval. So that is why I always say that, first of all, consider the data that you're having. Consider the highest number and the lowest number and that will give you an idea of the suitable skill that you have to choose. Some students also go with a certain kind of interval that becomes also inconvenient to work with. Don't forget you are the one plotting your own graph and so you don't have to restrict yourself and i mean go for a certain kind of skills that at the end of the day it is going to be very very challenging for even you yourself to plot and whatever you are doing always put it at the back of your mind that you are being timed so you don't just have to waste time on something that you could work within some few minutes okay so now we have it here and then here it's obviously our object which is the independent variable so we have the first one the duster Usually, I prefer to represent it with the first letter, uh, just to save space. We have the marker, we have eraser, and then pencil, okay? So if we are plotting this, so the duster is five. So five is here, then we plot it, five. Yes, just to, to make it a uh, big bit. No. So you see, that is a graph of what of Dasta. We are going to marker. Marker is four. So marker we plot four. So four is here. Then we have our marker to be what? Four. The next one is eraser. Eraser is six. And the last one is a pencil. So pencil is uh, two. Right. So every day we now have our bar graph being plotted. And the next thing that you have to do with, uh, as far as this one is concerned, is your title. So you don't have to forget your title. And obviously for the title, we can insert a title like 
So, uh, what? So at the end of the day, we have our bar graph, a bar graph of mass of objects. Of course, yes, you can underline it. Then you get your nice uh, graph for projected. If you're able to do something like this, you have a nice graph plotted. You have your x-axis labeled objects. And these are the key things that Cambridge will be checking. They will check the labeling of the y-axis. In this case, which is the average mass in kilograms. They will check the labeling of the x-axis, in this case, which is the object. And then they will check the title of your graph and the peaks that you have plotted. Okay. So if you're able to plot something like this, then you have your bar graph being plotted. And when you are done with something like this, usually, most of the time, the rest of the question that comes now, can, you can get your answer from the graph that you have, what, you have plotted. So now let's go back to the questions and then we answer them as it is. So we are done with the plotting of the bar graph for the data. The third question is, state the dependent and independent variable. I've already explained this, that whenever we talk of independent variable, it's what we change in an experiment. Dependent variable is what we measure. So in this case, the independent variable, what do we change during the question? We kept changing the object. So you can see we change the duster, Later, we change it to marker, we change it to eraser, and then we change it to what? Pencil. So that becomes what? The independent variable. So the independent variable is the object. What is a dependent variable? What we measure. What were we measuring? We are measuring the mass. So in this case, the average mass now becomes what? The independent, uh, sorry, the dependent variable. Now, the next question is, state two control variables from this experiment. Let's go back to the question and maybe that will give a further idea. Vincent measured the mass of four objects for three times. When you look at this question critically, what could be some of the control things? I mean, whenever we say of control, what were some of the things that were allowed to stay the same throughout the experiment? Number one, maybe we didn't do this practically, so it's going to be a bit difficult to accept. But number one, you realize that we use the same uh, skill which in this case, you can talk of a measuring scale or an electronic balance. Usually, I think electronic balance is what is mostly preferred. Uh, I'll draw a picture of an electronic balance for you, uh, but we have something like this. If you have seen it before, usually it's pick up a uh, picture like this. Then we have our, then maybe we say this is 10 kg. So when you place the thing on it, it will read the mass for you, okay? Yeah. So we measured all these objects using the same what? Measuring scale or the same electronic balance. So in that case, it becomes what? A control variable. Why are we saying it's a control variable? It is the same device that was used in measuring all of them. We didn't use measuring scale to measure duster, and then we use a force meter to measure marker. And then we use another device to measure what it is. It was the same thing. So that is why we say it is a control variable. Another control variable that you can think of is the number of times each, each object was measured. And in this case, you can see that each object was measured three times. So we measured the duster three times. We measured the marker three times. We measured the eraser three times. And as well as the pencil three times. So it is not like we measured marker two times Eraser one time, pencil uh, four times or something. So the number of times we measured each object remained the same, which is what, three times. And because it is the same throughout the experiment, it becomes what, a control variable. You see? So anytime Cambridge poses a question, uh, you just have to think through the question and you realize that most of the answers can be generated from the question. In this case, independent being the object, Dependent being the average mass, control variables, you can talk about the number of times that we measured each object. And of course, the device that was used is also the same. Now, usually the control variables, you get it from the question given. I mean, the kind of experiment that they want you to do 
or the kind of investigation that you are doing. So don't have it like a fixed mind that all the time the control variable is going to be this. No. Always know the question, read the question very well, and you will see that in the question there are a lot of things that were kept the same. The moment you realize that they are the same throughout the experiment, it becomes what? A control variable. All right? So now let's go to the next question. They are, asking, they are asking a sensitive question here. Why did he repeat the measurements for three times? I mean, on the good day, we could have measured it just once, okay? And then we have it. Okay, so if it is a duster, let's just measure the duster just once. And then we go, okay? So why do you think we are measuring it three times? It is always necessary to measure it three times or even more. And that is because we want to find the average value, the average mass. You see, sometimes when you are doing something and you just do it once, there is a higher tenacity that it, it could be as a result of an error. There can be an error, maybe uh, for some reason. So later in our subsequent class, we are going to look at some sources of error whenever you are doing scientific investigation or scientific experiment. But let's just say that I just want to measure my weight. And then I weigh uh, my mass is, let's say, sorry for using the word weight, Let's just say I'm measuring my mass and then it is like, let's say 100 kg for the first time. And that is it, we just kept it like that. But probably, ideally, uh, my mass would be somewhere 91 or 92. So what if the first one you did was an error? See, then you are going to cascade the error through. So we always advise that you repeat the measurements for more than two times. That way you'll be able to get the average value, okay? so that if there is any error, you can correct it. In so doing, you make it a fair test. Do you get it? So Cambridge can ask you in different ways. Is it necessary for them to repeat the measurement? Should they repeat the measurement? Why did they repeat the measurement for three times? Then you see that whenever you hear such a question, then it all works on the fact that we are repeating it to get the average value. When you do so, you can correct all errors and in so doing, it becomes a fair test, okay? So that is it. What apparatus was used to measure the mass? Of course, this one I've been saying throughout the question, of course, yes. If it is mass, then we are talking about a measuring scale or an electronic balance. If it is weight, then we are talking about what? Force meter, okay? So don't forget this. And then, the question number seven. Which object had the highest mass and why? Usually this question, you just have to go straight to your graph and then look at it. Which of them had the highest mass? It is simple. Just look through your graph. Which of them is having the highest peak? That is it. So in this case, the one with the highest mass is what? The eraser. Why? Because according to the bar graph, the eraser had the highest peak. You can make reference to two things here. Number one, you can make reference to the table or you can make reference to the graph. So you either say, according to the graph, eraser had the highest peak. That is why it is the one with the highest mass. Or according to table, let's say table 2.1, uh, eraser has the highest mass, which is six, okay? Cambridge always make reference to you using, uh, I mean, answering your question, tilting into the usage of the table or the graph or whichever data that has been provided. Usually, it leads to the award of a certain kind of mark. So always don't forget that. You are answering and you answer it subjectively towards the context. And in so doing, you make reference to the graph or you make reference to the table that has been provided for you. Now, the last thing is that they will ask you, what is your conclusion for this experiment? Now, usually when you are asked these questions, uh, you can start by certain prefix like in conclusion, to conclude. And when we are concluding from this graph, what do you think can be your conclusion? You can share it with me in the comment box before we even start talking about it. But obviously, you can see that from the graph, eraser had the highest peak compared to the rest. Okay, so that can be one of your conclusion. Or you may also come to compare it. Eraser had the highest peak, uh, sorry, according to the graph. So in conclusion, or to conclude, eraser had the highest mass with pencil having the lowest mass. That's it. Or, in conclusion, to conclude, eraser had the highest mass compared to the rest. Okay? So these are some of the petty, petty stars that Cambridge will be asking you. And then, when they ask you, you know where to take it to. The next thing that we are going to look 
at with the same question is why they will ask you to calculate the weight of these objects that have been measured here. Don't forget now we have the mass of these objects. So Cambridge will now ask you to calculate their corresponding weight. And then when you are done, they will also ask you to calculate their corresponding weight, this time not on Earth, but also on the moon. So first weight calculation is on Earth. Second weight calculation is on moon. And then now they ask you, what happens to the mass and weight when you take it to different planets? So in our next episode, we are going to look at how to calculate the weight of the object on Earth using the same data we are having here. So this time we are going to calculate the weight of the duster on Earth, the weight of the marker on Earth, the weight of the eraser on Earth, and the weight of pencil on Earth. When we are done, then we calculate the weight of these same objects when they are being taken to the moon. Follow me and then we'll go through.